Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Rutherford County School Board. Uh, <clears throat> July 17th, first order of business is the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, and I believe it's my time. Very well done, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank you. I about, I about got that pledge down. <laughs> um, but before we uh, start on the uh, agendas and look at those for just a second, uh, if there's no objection, I want to change the agenda just uh, one space. I'd, I'd like to do the safety coaches before we do the pool, so they're both involved, Mr. Tackett, and he's agreed to do that. So if there's no objection, we'll just swap eight and nine. And I hope that's okay with everybody. Um, okay. Any uh, any comments on the agenda? Want anything moved there other than that? <coughs> Consent agenda. Anything? Okay. We'll go over to uh, page seven. Excuse me, page five. We have visitors, of course, tomorrow night. You're doing all the introductions tomorrow night? Yes, sir. Okay. That, then that puts us to uh, safety coaches. Uh, Mr. Tackett, welcome, sir. Thank you. You've got some distinguished people with you. Uh, just as a point of rec recollection, I think it was January that uh, Terry Hodge, Coy Young, served as chair and co-chair of the safety committee that was formed uh, at the uh, uh, behest of the board. That committee met, uh, I think, three times. And from that uh, committee, a couple things came from it that uh, we're going to look at just briefly this evening. Uh, and that was uh, to hire safety coach at that time, and it, be it became safety coaches, to see if we couldn't find ways to uh, be of assistance to making things uh, better. And, and, and a real big part of that uh, idea was the committee members over and over kept talking about try and find ways to prevent injury as opposed to coming on the backside and trying to find ways to take care of injuries once they've happened. So it, it was, I think concussions was at the basis of where we were, but we recognized, I think soccer coaches maybe as much as anybody has talked about how much by doing proper kinds of stretching and trainings and, and, and those kind of things, we could prevent a lot of injuries to, to the neck, to the legs and to the back areas and so forth and, and certainly with concussions. So that's the way they came across with that. So I want to make sure you're aware of that. Uh, before I introduce to you the, the safety coaches that we have been fortunate enough to hire, I just want to share with you a brief uh, guideline of what these safety coaches are uh, asked to do. Uh, observe team practices and individual practices, inspect facilities and equipment, and assess for any improvements needed, analyze current training techniques, track injuries related to their assigned sports, and make recommendations to eliminate or minimize those, clearly communicate state, local, national safety regulations, and we are doing the very best we can to share with the coaches, the ADs, and the school principals that we want them wholly involved in the process. They should, should be part of this team, and uh, that, that is exactly what our safety coaches are to do, is, is to share information back and forth and take information that they could possibly get from some of the observations that they make and share those with other teams or, or schools or coaches around the system. Uh, I am going to uh, introduce to you the safety coaches. If you all will stand up, if you would, uh, Greg Wyatt. Uh, Greg will be doing, uh, taking care of our football, swimming, and track. Uh, Patrick Stoker. Pat, uh, Greg is a uh, former coach at Siegel High School and now teaches there. Patrick is a teacher at Laverne High School. A former coach at uh, I know Siegel Middle School for sure. He's going to be uh, our volleyball, basketball, uh, and oh, it's one out. Patrick, what am I leaving out? Cross country. There you go. Uh, Mark Gagne, just recently named assistant principal at uh, Smyrna Primary School. Yep. Former now former wrestling coach at Stewart's Creek High School, and, and prior to that, he'll have wrestling and and soccer. Soccer, of course, girls in the in the fall and guys in the spring. Uh, Ed Pass, who's a teacher at, uh, and former assistant uh, football coach at Siegel High School, will be taking care of 
football as well, along with softball and baseball. And Julie Atkin, who is assistant principal at Rock Springs Middle School, is our cheerleader, cheerleader uh, safety coach. We're very fortunate to have these people on board. Uh, we had uh, 41 applicants. And uh, as I stated, I think the last time I met with you guys and gals, uh, the, the passion they have for what they're doing is, is really stands out. It's very clear in what they're looking at that they want to be uh, as thorough with this because they have a passion for doing what they can to help out with this situation to make uh, safety of our athletes, student athletes is at the forefront. Uh, along with that, Dragonfly is also being instituted as our online registration process uh, to help manage those required forms that we have and, and very much to track injuries. Oh, I forgot Brad Rowling. Excuse me, Brad. Brad Rowling is our lead <laughs> trainer in the system. Brad, Brad is actually uh, the, the, the person that, uh, that brought Dragonfly to our attention as we were discussing in the, in the safety committee a way to get the forms managed. He said, you know what? There's a system out there I think we need to look at that will not only manage our forms but help us to track those injuries because questions were coming, how many this and how many that, and, and we really didn't have a good answer for that. So Dragonfly, we think, is going to be very helpful, not only in managing our, fun, our, our files and forms, but also to assist in that tracking. To that end, uh, Greg Wyatt is going to come up and briefly share with you a little bit about what Dragonfly is about and uh, how that process is going to work. Uh, thank you, Mr. Taggart. I was told to be very brief. That, that, as my former coaches will tell you, that usually doesn't happen for me, so I'll be as brief as I can. Um, this is the main page here where this is the, parent, this is the uh, uh, first page that parents will see um, when they begin to log their children onto uh, Dragonfly. One of the, one of the um, nice things about Dragonfly is um, if, you have a, if you have a son or a daughter that's going to be a sixth grader this year, and plays a sport, and they go on to Dragonfly, um, this will be the only year they have to go through and fill out their information because it will be kept there the whole time. The only thing they'll have to do is go back and update things um, from time to time. Uh, if, if there's injuries that occur or if there's an allergy that has formed or anything like that, those types of things will be updated. And then other than that, they'll never have to go back and, and fill out all the uh, uh, bookwork of information that we give them at the beginning of every season. Um, that's one of the things that was attractive about this, I think, um, from the parent uh, point of view. Um, in my experience, um, we, we worked with a, uh, a company that uh, TSSAA recommends uh, a few years ago, and it was very unuser friendly. It was hard to deal with. It took about an hour and a half to fill out. Um, Dragonfly does not. This is what us as coaches and uh, us as safety coaches will be able to see. Um, the nice thing about this, this is um, it's all HIPAA uh, certified. Um, nobody can get to anybody's records. Uh, the only person that can see single football team are the single football coaches and administration. Um, if you're a coach at uh, you know Blackman Element or Blackman Middle School, you cannot access anybody else's except for Blackman Middle students. So um, everything is kept uh, in house that, that you can't see this. But this is one of the things that I that we would see. Um, if I was a safety coach and I wanted to go look at Siegel High School, and this is all their athletes and all of the ones that have signed up so far. As you can see, um, we've been using this since uh, early spring. Uh, our trainer, uh, Joe Boker, has done a real good job of, of incorporating this. I came to him. Um, Brad's known about this for a while. I got to use it in an all-star game that I coached in in January, and we used it for our players there. And that's where I kind of came to Brad and said, have you ever heard about this? And the company that we were about to use was about to charge us a bunch of money. Brad and I found out they were going to do this for free, and it's, uh, it's really user-friendly, number one. Number two, they're very, uh, they've been very good with working with us on how we want to do things. All right, this is an example of three different athletes right here. So a coach can come in and say, okay, this young man right here has had an injury. He's okay to practice, but he cannot play. So he's got yellow in practice. That means he's limited. If he was clear in both practice and play, he would be green. So his coach 
this is a baseball player. His coach would be able to come in and say, uh, okay, he can, he's very limited at practice. He can talk to our trainer, and our trainer can come in and say, coach, this is what he can do and can't do. He's not able to play in the ball game. When I click on this uh, young man, I can go in, and you see here, I'm not going to delve into this a whole lot, but uh, you can see uh, the, the trainer will have access to listing the injuries and things like that. We'll be able to, um, to be able to track and stuff like that. Uh, we can go in here and we can see that he's not filled out any of his documents yet. He's a spring sport player, so I'm sure they haven't got into this very much. Um, uh, but if I'm a coach and um, I want to, um, let's say I've got a kid that's injured on the field, we have to call the uh, ambulance. His documents are right there on the coach's phone. This is his history form that he's filled out. Uh, this is his consent form. Uh, all the forms that we have them filled out are online now. Um, the only thing that, that they do not fill out is the uh, physician's physical form. We're not to that point yet, but we can put that form in here by being able to take a snapshot of it on our cell phone and slide it into that kid's records. So that so every kid should have their physical form in there along with all their other forms right there that are accessible to any type of uh, emergency personnel, doctors, trainers, and coaches. Um, you know, this is one of the nice aspects of this is that we can go in and look at, uh, uh, look at each individual athlete. Um, like Mr. Taggett said, at the end of a season, we'll be able to go through and say, um, you know, how many concussions did we have in football this year? Uh, next year, as we go through the season, we'll be able to track, did concussions go up or down? What did we do different? How can we handle these types of situations? What can we do um, to better serve our athletes and, and keeping them safer and things like that? Um, there's not much else that's involved. If you guys have got any questions about anything, I'll be glad to try to answer them if I can. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that. Um, so the physical form, when the, when the kids go to get their athletic physical, the parents or the players still have to physically turn the paper form into the coach? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yeah, that, it'll get uploaded into Yes, ma'am. One of the things that we're going to try to do, and Brad and I have talked about it, is we would like to, at some point in time, get to where the physicians in our county will be able to do this online and, and digitally sign it online, and it's already loaded for our kids. That would be great. Now, that's, that's a, you know how medicine is. That's a very big task for us to be able to try to do, but we still might be able to do it at the free physical forms at TOA, possibly. It may not be this next year. It might be a couple years down the road, but that's something we would like to eventually try to get to. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Well, all the safety coaches, Mr. Tackett, be able to look at these? Yes, sir. We'll be uh, us, they won't us as a safety committee will be able to look at any kid in the county that's on Dragonfly at any point in time. Good. See, one of the things we talked about, a baseball field, is there more than the average number of injuries on that particular field or something like that? This is going to give us that ability to do counts and do reports and things to let us look at facilities along with any other techniques or things that are being done. Yeah, we, we've never, in my 27 years of coaching in the county, I don't think we've ever tracked any type of injuries, and this is a way for us. I think the hardest part is going to be the middle schools and being able to get the coaches to input the information because they don't have the trainers on campus. So they're the ones that that's, – that's one extra thing that they're going to end up having to do to be able to really have an accurate count. In our high schools, we, we shouldn't have that problem with the trainers that are there on site and things like that. That should be an easy thing to do with our, with our high schools. Coach, I think another thing there, people watching us on television are, who is this Dragonfly? How big are they? And I remember when we met them, they are the company who Division One NCAA – they are the company designated to exchange game films across the United States for all Division One teams. So there, there are assets there. Yes. And he says HIPAA compliant. It was in the Amazon cloud, HIPAA compliant cloud. So we asked some very tough <clears throat> questions about security and all when we did that. And in fact, Ms. Delbridge is back there. She's the one that popped the questions to him about a lot of those compliance. So. Um, I think as a parent or somebody in, in the school system, I'm fairly comfortable they can do what they say they can do. Yeah, there's a lot of, there are a lot of teams in the NCAA that are 
presently using this system. Um, I don't think the entire NCAA has gone to this yet, but uh, there are a lot of teams that are that, and universities that are using this system right now as far as uh, um, tracking injuries and, and keeping up with athletes, paperwork and stuff like that for the universities. Board? Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Appreciate right. it. Mr. Tech, uh, anything to add about yeah, safety coaches? One, one, one thing, uh, and uh, I sent you a little packet of, uh, there's a checklist up on top uh, as an example of the kinds of things that we'll be a asking to look for. That, that is one that's generic that all sports would be, uh, be looking at. The, the second one there is one that's sport specific, soccer, wrestling, basketball, football will have their own sheet there, but that just as an example of what you can do with that, that, uh, that we'll be uh, looking for. And then the third sheet was uh, just a list from TWSAA for football practice rules that we certainly expect, everybody already knows and, and does. I, I think the point that we, we clearly are trying to make, we, we've got a, a lot of excellent experienced coaches in our system. Uh, and many of these ex excellent experienced coaches will not need really any over the shoulder looking or hand holding or, or anything of that nature. As a matter of fact, uh, they probably could be sharing with us some of the safety practices that need to be going on. But we've got an awful lot of inexperienced coaches in our system that will benefit greatly from these checklists, benefit greatly from these, these reminders from TWSAA of what they might happen to have uh, that's there. Before we leave this thing, I want to let Mark, Mark Gagne come up very briefly and he's going to show a, a couple of techniques that we're going to try to use with our safety coaches to make our jobs. Um, uh, work a lot better. Well, we wanted to provide uh, some accountability for you guys to see exactly where our visits are and what we're doing, so that way you guys can get an idea what schools are getting more visits than others. And so uh, another great benefit of this is we're utilizing Office 365 a little bit more uh, advantageous for the, the county to show that we're actually using the power of what we're paying for in that. So what we've created is we've created a form for all safety coaches as they make a visit. You'll see we've got our five safety coaches up there. They'll log in and they'll go ahead and create what date they uh, uh, are logging in a, a visit for. They're gonna select what school. We've got all the schools accounted for inside here. They'll just select the school that they visited. And then we're gonna track their mileage through here. Sport focus, we've got every sport listed in here so they can determine what sports are getting specific focus and which sports we probably could maybe visit a little bit more. This would be a great tool for us at the end of the year to analyze how we did with the program, where we need to maybe enhance some things. If there's things on this form, if you guys want to visit and take a look and see, hey, we'd like to have this tracked as well. Those are easy things that we can implement in this. So again, this is just a rough draft of a form that we as coaches have started using, and we are going to add things as, as the thing goes. Um, let me add something too. Greg was talking about Dragonfly. Another great thing about them is the fact that we've actually had a chance to sit and meet with the developers and they are very, very adaptable to what we're doing and they asked us for what kind of things we wanted. Same thing is true with this. We're going to try to be very adaptable with this as well and grow with the program and try to make it better. So we've got some reasons for visits, initial visits, uh, and then general comments about the visit so we can track everything we've done throughout the school year. Nice thing about this is we get a nice little uh, uh, analytics page that pops up for us so we can see already that Greg Wyant has made three visits that he's logged. Uh, I've logged two visits already as well. Uh, we've got eight responses as far as you know what dates we've gone. Uh, we can see what schools have, have re received the most visits. We can also see the average time that we've spent there. Football right now is getting quite a bit of focus because of the fact you've got two coaches spending time visiting them. Uh, soccer's not geared up nearly as much as other teams have. We're gonna get involved with that a little bit more. But then we get to see all the different comments that were made by coaches, the reasons why they had the visits, and then we can go back and look at all those details. And this also is an exportable uh, Excel spreadsheet for us to print and give every board member a copy of all the things that we did as a, as a safety, co uh, safety uh, coaches. So like I said, if there's anything else that you guys want added to this, please let us know. We'll be more than glad to account for whatever it is you need. Uh, we're trying to use this as a tool for us as well, so next year we can see, hey, maybe we want to put a little bit more focus on soccer because they're having more concussions than anybody else. And so maybe we can maybe, maybe curtail some of the visits from football and maybe go to soccer, which I know that kind of doesn't make sense. But, uh, you know, we could, we could maybe pull some from sm some sports and maybe put it to other sports and get a little bit more coverage. But again, this is for your guys' purposes and for us to be able to make sure that we're uh, analyzing what we're doing and collecting appropriate data for growth. Any questions? 
Mr. Gagne created this himself. So yeah, just a comment on that. Talent here. That's outstanding. Yeah. That, is, that is a board tool that is greatly appreciated. What I'll do is I'll send everybody on the board a link to where you can actually analyze the data at any given time. You can just click on the link and you see, can see the data. The minute we log, it's immediately putting it up there and showing you what it looks like, right? And if there's anything you want added to it for us, please let us know and I can immediately implement that and that data will start getting collected. Closing, uh, a head coach is only as good as his assistant coaches, and assistant coaches are only as good as their players. I got a great team here. I'm excited about that. I think you, you've seen uh, the caliber of, of folks that we have, uh, and, and so I'm excited about that. Uh, every one of them are smarter than me when it comes to all this kind of thing, which works out well. I'll sit up here and make sure that I analyze all that data for them, and, and uh, they'll take care of the, the tough stuff, kind of the way, kind of the way it works. Assistants do the hard work, and the head guy gets the uh, maybe the glory if we get any glory out of this thing. Hopefully, that's the case. I did want to remind you one more thing. There, I only had three posters, but I did put one on each table there. Just some examples of, of some safety kinds of things that are available to us that we're going to try to purchase or post and, and have available to put in schools and so forth. So, unless you've got questions for me, I'm more than glad to answer any for you. Other, other than that, we'll close our presentation. I would like to say that uh, TSBA has recognized this program, so they're they're putting it out there for other school districts to see that we're up. There, there's no question in my mind that uh, this is going to be looked at by lots of systems around. Uh, I don't think that's what our purpose for doing it is, yeah. but certainly if we can be as successful with this as we think we can be, uh, I think it's a model that uh, certainly will be captured and kept and copied by some other people around the state and possibly around the country. Very powerful tool. I hope so. We think so. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taggett. I think I can safely speak for the board and tell you we've got great faith in these folks right here and in you. I think this is um, all started with the committee. And Mr. Hodge was um, kind enough to chair. Mr. Young served on it, and uh, I'm I'm pretty confident that we're going in the right direction here. Uh, board, anything else on this before we get to Mr. Tackett again? We've worked our way down to Mr. Tackett. <laughs> <laughs> going well, we're making progress. <laughs> Nothing else here? Mr. Tackett, swimming pools. Are you ready? This is a subject that we have obviously discussed before. And Mr. Jordan asked me to just kind of be here as a, uh, a, a person that can uh, share what we do know about where we are. What we do know, we have four swimming pools. We have eight high schools and nine middle schools that use those four pools. And I shared with this board and, uh, and it's a concern that Mr. Jordan at least has, and I know that's the topic of the discussion is at what point in time are we going to reach that saturation point and what can we do? We discussed that, that there was a possibility. I haven't heard anything more from Rutherford County, Murfreesboro City, anything that would suggest that there's a panacea coming of a, an, another swimming venue within the, uh, within the area. Even if it were there, we wouldn't have any guarantees or thoughts that, that our school system would have access to it at 3 o'clock in the afternoon for swimming practice, it's probably going to strike me as that's the time they're going to need it the worst. But it, it's not there. It's not in the possibility. I don't think it's going to be there. With Rockvale High School coming on board next school year, uh, that's going to be one more high school that we, we're confident we'll be using a, a swim venue. Uh, we have discouraged, let's just say it that way, uh, new middle schools like Rock, Rocky Fork coming on uh, from getting into the swimming program. And that... Uh, we certainly have not said you can't do it, but we, we do recognize that there is a point, a tipping point to where it's just simply not going to work. It, it's not like a basketball floor, keep that in mind. On a basketball floor, you could start at 12 o'clock at night and practice 24 hours a day and sweep the floor once in a while and the basketball floor would be fine and you keep on going. A swimming pool, you put bodies in there and more bodies in there and more bodies in there. There comes a point in time it's saturated with all the human element, let's just leave it at that, of, of, of what it can practically absorb. So it's not just a matter of how much time is there 
but it's also a, ma a matter of how many bodies you can put in the pool. Smyrna High School, for example, does use it as an academic class. And so they're putting lots of kids in the pool aside from the swimmers. So they have to have less, they can have fewer swim teams practice there simply because they've already got that in place. So with eight high schools in place and nine middle schools in place, the, the question is, at what point in time do we have to make some tough decision? And the tough decision in my mind would be uh, having to dissolve the middle school program simply because if you can't offer it to all, I don't think you can offer it to any. I don't think you're there today. I, I, I certainly don't. I don't know that we've got any, to my knowledge, we have no new swim teams from what we had last year. So we'll be able to follow the same schedule, practice schedule. But just so you'll know, we are beginning swim practices at six o'clock in the morning at every one of the four schools, every pool is, is open and having swim practices at six o'clock in the morning. God bless those kids and, and parents and coaches that do that. But I don't think that's unusual in the swim world, frankly, that that's what they do. It, they're used after school, and some of them are used up to 8 o'clock at night. And you say, well, we could practice from 8 to 9. Again, go back to the, the factor of how many bodies you can put in the pool. So that's the information. That's what I can share. Uh, I don't know that I can answer many more questions. I did talk with the uh, head coach at Riverdale and because he saw it on the agenda and were curious what swimming pools was the conversation. I shared with him what that was. Uh, and he's, they, they certainly are aware of where that uh, problem is. And to go on top of that, we've got Riverdale and Oakland High School swimming pools that are now 45 years old. And we don't know for sure when that situation will come that you're going to have to do some major renovations to those pools. So it, 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 it is a, at a critical stage. It's not at a crisis stage. It's not a point that you've got to pull plugs on anything right now. But with Rockvale High School coming on, I don't think there's any question you're going to make sure that that team has a place to practice. And as more schools come on board, uh, you, you, being a foresightful group that you are, you just need to be considering what options that you happen to have today, tomorrow, five years down the road, if you want to make some kind of a plan. So that's what that's about. Central swims at Riverdale, right? Central swims at Riverdale, correct. All right, and Riverdale swims at Riverdale, and I can't imagine Rockville doing anything else but swimming at I Riverdale. Would think, I would think that would be the logical place for them to go, yes. And, and one of the problems, just to let you know, one of the problems we have, I don't know why this is, but more middle schools on the northern part of the county are involved with swim programs. And so when, let's say, Rocky Fork, if they, if they had chosen to have a swim program, uh, Laverne Smyrna pools are full. They're, we could find a pocket at Oakland, but taking kids from Rocky Fork all the way to Oakland is problematic from a distance standpoint. So it's not just a matter of is there space available, is there space available that is at least reasonably accessible to the students at, the, at that point in time we need to serve. So that's, that is part of the deal. Part of the puzzle piece that can be problematic is sometimes you've got one coach that coaches both the high school and middle school team at a school area like Blackman Middle School, Blackman High School. Therefore, they need to practice at the same venue at a adjacent time period or at the same time. Because we've got several times that we've got two teams in the pool at the same time. So that has to be part of the puzzle as well. So it, it's not quite as easy to say, well, we can put four here, four here, four here, four here. It didn't always work there, or five, whatever it happens to be. Not always quite that easy. I, I think, uh, and I was kind of surprised, really, but uh, the, the city, uh, Murfreesboro, is going to build a pretty massive complex out uh, highway 96 i think a park complex yeah uh and to my knowledge no pool i don't i don't believe they uh, i think that's what they decided to do i don't uh I'm and certainly not sure i'm sure there's no aquatic center that's there yeah um because we've discussed the possibility and we've had discussions on this before about where our youngsters could swim other than the pools that we've got, which are four pools, two of them 30 years old and two of them 45 years old, and that's problematic right there. Mm -hmm. But anyway, and we just we don't have a we don't have a spot where we could even rent like we did the tennis courts, which was I know we discussed that at, at length. But I did ask because uh, I knew this conversation was coming. I asked Mr. Clardy, who, who's the master of the impossible, to find out just general questions our answers about pools and uh, what, what do pools cost? 
Talk to us here a little bit. <laughs> well, what I did is I put a concept together on two Olympic-sized pools inside with lockers, uh, offices, restrooms, uh, mechanical and electrical room, bleachers, and uh, it takes approximately 86,400 square feet to house all of that. And uh, I went out to two different contractors and had them to give me a conceptual estimate on what that building would cost. The high one came back at $28 million, and the low one came back at about $19 million. And uh, <laughs> the $19 million is approximately, I think, in the range, it's in $228 a square foot. Uh, of course, the other one was over $300 a square foot. I know that. Uh, we had a call today on what was it, Wilson County? Wilson County is looking at building a high school, and they've asked for $110 million for from their county commission to fund the project. $110? $110. They had heard that we were building them for much less and wanted to confirm that, which we did. So our high school, new high school, cost us $64 million. So, so we're getting a $40 million bonus, I guess. $28 million was, was the high estimate right. for one pool? For a two-pool complex. Two pool. Right, 86,400 square feet with two Olympic-sized pools under roof with all of the other things that go, the offices, the restrooms, the locker rooms, bleachers, heating, mechanical, electrical, lighting, all of those types. We can come pretty close to, a, we can build an elementary school for that price. That's correct. So I'm curious, the, the Lebanon or the Wilson County um, High School, their request, did their request include room for a swimming pool? Is that what we're to understand here? Or no, ma'am. That was tacked on or I built think on? Gary was just, Mr. Hardy was just expressing that we're, we're pretty efficient. Okay. But it, no, it did not include a pool that I know of, but it, it's a 2,000 seat high school. Thank you. So Rockvale will give us nine swimming high schools, correct? That's right. Yeah. And What's that now? Nine, if, when Rockvale comes on board. Nine high schools will be swimming? That'd be correct, yes. Yeah. We have eight right now. So, <clears throat> Rocky Fork has not asked for one, to my knowledge. But if they did, how many middle schools does that give us? We have, we have eight, currently, eight high schools and nine middle schools that have swim teams that we, that we are putting in pools. Okay, so... But, 17 teams. So, if Rocky Fork did ask, <clears throat> and Rock's with Rock Vale, then we're looking at nine, we're looking at 19 mm -hmm. different teams. And obviously with nine middle schools, right now we have 14, so you got four, five middle schools right now that do not have swim teams by, oh, okay. by choice. <clears throat> okay, well, or, or, but they could ask for it. Oh, absolutely. I can say, to, to be perfectly honest, we've, we've tried to discourage that just simply because I, I don't want to get to that point, but it, that, that, that's not a fair. We haven't, when uh, new principal James Sullivan at, talked about that, I just shared with him where we are in this situation, and uh, he made the decision not to offer swimming to his school. But, uh, you know, there's certainly going to be uh, the possibility that someone's going to suggest, well, next year we need to have a swim team. And if that, what the parents asked for, we certainly need to offer it to them. Yes. As long as we offer to other schools, there's no question about that. Well, with the number of high schools, especially when Rock Bell comes online, mm -hmm. and with the number of middle schools that we already have, mm -hmm. and with Rocky Fork, and if they all desired to swim, sure. we're way past the saturation. In the spring, I sent out to all principals 
Do you anticipate offering swimming next year if you're not already offering it? And none responded back as a yes. But if all five of those schools had come back as a yes, which they very well could have, there's, there's no question in my mind at that point in time you would have to make that, you would have that decision to make. What I would not want to do is, is have to make a last minute decision. I would prefer to make a decision prior to becoming desperate and go ahead and get the situation stable now rather than having to do something that is potentially just over the hill. The only thing I can respond to that, Mr. Blair, is, is that in the next, not this school year, but in the next school year, I'm very confident you've got one more high school that will be putting a swim team in the water that you'll have to serve. I don't know about the middle school situation. Can we, can, can we offer to Rockvale and keep afloat? I think the answer, I think the answer to that it would be yes. But that and another middle school or two or whatever, and as I say, it, it's, it's, only, it's only fair that if you offer it to one, you got, you're going to offer it to all. So I, I, the, the tipping point's not today, but the, it is coming. There is no question that time's there. So you as a board have the. Would you perceive it to be fair that if the board made a decision to, to do away with the middle school, if, if we gave them a two, with Rockville coming online, would a two year notice be, uh, be fair in your mind? I was one of the seven members on the board once upon a time, and at that time I might have answer the question but right now I think I'll, I'll give it to the seven wise folks that are on the board to, to make that decision. Okay. Mr. Mr. Tackett, um, and this may be something that we've discussed before so if it is and my memory's failing me sure. I'll, I'll ask for forgiveness. Are any of our schools using any outside facilities to practice or to swim at like Patterson or Sportscom or no, we have, we have checked a couple of places and it, it, it and it's not worked. Some of them are not laned properly. Okay. Uh, we did look seriously at uh, the YMCA in Smyrna facility that was there, and we discussed back and forth that possibility, and they just were not able to work that into their schedule to make it work. I mean, again, they're they're an enterprise that have their their people to serve as well. So there are some wet spots in the county that are you know that maybe can be negotiated uh if, if that could happen if we could get four hours of pool space in some place like the smyrna y the old murfreesboro y is not there anymore but uh you know that that facility would have been a possibility uh i don't know which one of them are lane properly length is proper because when they build recreational pools they don't have to build them to any kind of a length specification or depth for diving you've got to be certain depth or people can literally dive into the pool for swimming purposes. So I can't say that we've got any that meet those specs, but I do know there's some possibilities at least to look at. So do we know for sure that Sportscom and Patterson Park do not meet those specs then? I know for sure Sportscom and Patterson Park are not options to us based upon their their schedules that they have happen their to have. Schedules that they, not they, necessarily they the feel specs. like they need to serve their public their sure. their clients the way they are without taking time out of that schedule. The Smyrna Y, to my knowledge, is the only one that was even agreeable to discuss the possibility of maybe allowing one of our teams in. But they're gonna be, their first allegiance is going to be to their clientele too. It is, and that's what it was finally, that was two years ago. That was the decision they made then. I don't know what their decision would be tomorrow if we could call and ask them that question. Likely that would be the answer, but I don't know that for sure. My perception with the Murfreesboro Y closing that uh, the Smyrna Y and their facilities, swimming facilities, probably. I think it'd be fair to say that it's probably increased. the population has increased there as opposed to less. Yes, I think so. They're almost surely going to have to pay for the privilege, even if I would, you. I would certainly think so, yes. Board? I have a couple of other yes. questions. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, no, 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 that's all right. I just, I'm curious if we have explored at all or, or done any kind of surveying of other larger school systems in the state and how 
their handling um, situation. I mean, obviously, I know small, smaller school systems with one or two high schools is probably not an issue like we're dealing with, but are there any other larger ones? Most school systems don't offer swimming at all. I mean, your smaller system for sure is not even going to have an right. indoor facility in the, in the county at all to offer. So the largest majority of, of high schools are not able to offer swimming to their as a, as a as sport. A it's not a TSSAA sport for that purpose, one of those reasons. There's just not enough teams to schools that can offer that. I'm, I'm confident Metro Nashville doesn't have that, for example. I'm, I'd be pretty confident Chattanooga, Knox, other large systems don't simply space availability. Mr. Tackett, would, be, would it be possible for you to survey the high school coaches and get their feedback on what the elimination of middle school programs sure. would do to their teams? Sure, absolutely. I, I don't anticipate you've already done that, but if you, if you would. No, no problem at all, easily, easily done, glad to. Mr. Clark, any information on the repair and so forth of pools? And any figures that you could share there? I know it's expensive. <laughs> We are doing quite a bit of odds and ends. I don't have the exact figure, but the age on the pools are going to be an issue. Um, of course, we have to maintain them by painting them uh, every few years, each of them. Uh, we've repaired some cracks and those types of things. Uh, it's uh, keeping up with the pumping apparatuses and the filter apparatuses is pretty challenging. Um, we, through maintenance, uh, order the supplies for the schools and they apply them and do those types of things and check all the water and stuff. So uh, it's a pretty good job. We have issues with corrosion on the insides of those buildings and things and mildew that we have to constantly stay after and keep cleaned up and keep painted to keep uh, from getting rust through because the stuff starts falling off into the pools and clogs the filler system and causes other issues. So it's just a, uh, it's a pretty good job to keep up with them. It costs some money to do that. Questions board or comments? Mr. Chairman, I have one other I'd like to just kind of um, something I'd like to toss out there. I know, I mean, obviously it goes without saying, and I appreciate the work that Mr. Clardy's done to explore, um, you know, what it would cost to, to build a pool or a complex like we talked about. I know one of the things that um, a couple of booster parents have mentioned to me that, you know, the swim team boosters are the fact that we don't have a facility either that will accommodate or is of the right size or structure, whatever the specifications are, to actually host tournaments. Right. Um, so I know, obviously, it's, it's not in the budget, um, nor would it be with the way we're needing to build schools and we need classrooms and we need to get rid of portables um, to build a $28 million swim complex. But what I would be curious to know is, because I think there are other systems in the state that have those types of facilities because obviously all these big swim meets and tournaments are being hosted somewhere um, is what kind of revenue those um, facilities generate as far as you know, what, they're, what they're bringing in and what it would look like as far as perhaps paying for the facility. Hey, you're correct. Uh, the, uh, the pools we have do not meet the, the 50 meter specs and the, the, the diving requirements and so forth. So we, so when we have, they, when they hold a county swim meet, they have to go outside of county to do that. I believe they're going to Wilson County. I believe I'm, I'm right saying that. Is it Williamson? We, we, Wilson or Williamson? I'm not real sure. I think it might be both actually. And then be. there's one I think in Chattanooga. I'm not sure the school system actually owns those pools. I'll find out. I, I think the one at Wilson, and I've been in that area, I think was their county. 
Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I, th I think it's another entity that may be government related, but I don't think it's the school system. I'm not positive. I'll, I can find that out. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, since this is on the agenda, if a board member wanted to make a motion tomorrow evening, would it be appropriate since this is part of the agenda? Oh, yes, I think so. But um, I think maybe Mr. Tack is going to have to do a little bit more research on perhaps. I, I, uh, I don't know what the, the answer to your question is yes. I mean, I, you, you, know, you can make a motion if, if, if you wish. I, I, I think it's some things that um, um, I'm really torn on, on this in many different directions. Uh, uh, but I think we have to we have to look at it from this standpoint. When 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 Riverdale and Oakland were built in 1971-2, and the pool, uh, both schools had what at that time were state of the art pools. I mean, you know, they were, they were very fine. No middle school was swimming. We didn't have but two middle schools anyway. And as far as I know, nobody was swimming. Well, we added, you know, we split. Smyrna High School and Laverne and Smyrna both got pools. That was, I believe, 1988. I believe that's right. Um, so they're 30 years old. Riverdale, Riverdale, Oakland, 45 years old. We've had a lot of middle schools since then, and you say nine of them are swimming, yeah, and they were not built for that particular purpose. We didn't perceive the board at that time did not perceive this as a problem. Put it that way. Um, now it looks like it's caught up with us. Um, I don't think there's any question, and it's going to get worse. It looks like to me. I don't know what the. I don't know what the solution is. I, I think. We, I think one thing we would re be remiss to not say is thank you to the four swim coaches out there and four high schools out there that are making 17 schools work in four pools. Yeah, I agree. That's pretty it, miraculous. If, if, if we'd come to someone and say, we've got four pools and 17 teams, we'd look for the loaves and the fishes story probably, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't make logical sense that 17 teams can possibly use four pools. Well, especially going back to the analogy I made about the basketball floors that can absorb all those people, but the pools can't. So, I mean, congratulations to them to, for making it work. They're, they're having to do some, some hale and hearty work to make that happen. I, we, we could have 20, 25 teams in four pools, couldn't we, uh, here, in, here in two years? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I must say, I'm, in, in these numbers we're talking about, we really are not including Eagleville. Middle school and high school in those numbers, Holloway's not included there. I mean, in, in theory, we could do big more than that, in theory. I mean, I don't expect Holloway to ask for a swim team, but they could. And if they were at the high school, they wanted one, I think we'd be beholden to serve their, their needs. Well, with Rockvale just being next door, Eagleble could very easily ask for a middle and a high school. I mean, could. So, anyway. Let's go. Uh, I go to a lot of basketball games, of course, since that's kind of a passion of mine. But Oakland and Riverdale with, with the pools. Uh, I don't know that, that I've ever been there to a basketball game where the swimming pool wasn't open. There was, somebody was practicing. You know that because when they open the door, you can smell the chemicals. Well, you, I mean, the cars are all down there. There's no place to park, and the lights are on. Uh, I, I just, I'm sure there's been some nights when there was nobody there, but Generally speaking, swimmers are practicing, and I guess they have to. I guess. Actually, some scuba classes taught there at, at, at East Oakland's pool, I know also, not connected directly with the school system, but on late hours are actually offering that. Mr. Nunley is one of them instructors, our EMS director. Well, one reason we have work sessions is so we can discuss these things now and not decide now. Uh, but um, uh, if, if, we're going, if we're going to make uh, some sort of change, and I don't know what any motions are going to be, but if we're going to do that, we need, we need to do it before school opens, I would think. 
uh, if we're going, if it's going to be something that's going to take place later, let's put it that way, which is what Mr. Blair spoke about a minute ago. I don't know whether I vote for that or not, but I'm just, uh, I'm just saying we need to do something, and uh, and uh, and we'll shoot for tomorrow night. And if it, if there are no other questions, I don't know. Mr. I'll, ask, I'll ask the question. If we if we were to find that middle school feeding into the high school programs uh, is is the health of the high school programs, and I imagine it at, at some level it is, uh, then would 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 fellow board members, if presented with a motion, and and I'm not inclined that uh, that any motion is necessarily here, as Mr. Tackett says, uh, it is a critical issue but not a crisis. Um, would we grant zone exemptions uh, for the express purpose of I am looking for a swimming program? Would we allow a limited number of middle schools to feed into high school programs? Uh, if, uh, if we are entertaining the thought and idea of, of a motion that would indicate change, uh, those are questions that, that I would be interested in fellow board members' uh, thought and comment on and, uh, and amendments that, uh, that I would have in mind as well. I can't answer that one. I don't know how <laughs> the other five of you feel. Uh, Just something to think about overnight. Well, my initial thought would be we either have middle school swimming or we don't. That would be my initial thought. Perhaps I'm wrong about that. Maybe I'm being, I don't know what I'm being, but not entirely fair, maybe. I don't think it's any question that the high school coaches are going to say they need middle school swimming. Sure. And uh, I, I, I don't blame them for that. I, I, that's fine. I would also say that, I'm just thinking out loud here, that if it were my child and they could not swim at, say, Oakland Middle, then they would receive additional training elsewhere, independently of Oakland Middle School. Uh, but maybe not. Maybe every parent can't do that or won't do it. A naughty problem, isn't it? I mean, it Mighty is. problem. And, and I, think, I, think, I don't think there's any question it's going to get worse. Um, tell you what, if you're swimming at 6 o'clock in the morning and going to school, <laughs> that, that's, 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 that's a commitment right there. Let me, let me throw an idea out briefly. It just kind of, if it were to go away, <clears throat> we, are, we are spending money now on swim coaches, so there are, there are dollars and cents being applied right now to to the program that, that that would go away. Would it be conceivable to offer to those school aid children, regardless of school, the opportunity to come and get instruction, coaching at the four pools we have at a certain period of time between X and X? And they may not be part of a team, may not be part of a competition, but certainly could gain instruction that could be helpful to them as a middle school swimmer moving up to high school at the later time as opposed to a competitive thing. That, that, that would be a thought that I'd have. And continue to pay the coach. And continue to pay the coach. Would the board be in a position to, to fund that at some level? Are there allow kids the opportunity to swim, even though they might not be part of a competitive team, they would have the opportunity to at least train. Are there competitions at the middle school level? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, they, they, do, they do have swim matches. Okay. Any other thoughts on this uh, before we move on? Mr. Tech, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Clark, yes, sir. I just wanted to uh, qualify that both of these pools are uh, competition size, they're 25 by 50 meters each. Okay. I, d I remember years ago, I believe I was teaching there at that time, or I was involved in the summer rec program with Ben Cates. At any rate, one of the pools went down and, and it had to be repaired. Now, Mr. Clarty was not on board at that time, but it was very expensive and it took forever to get it back running. And if that happened now, or in the middle of the school year, 
I mean, we would really have a problem then. If everybody going to Riverdale, for instance, had to go to Oakland, I mean, the problem would be, well, we couldn't solve that problem. Now, Mr. Clarity does a lot better job, maybe. If that were to happen, your solution to the problem would be high schools would continue to swim at some point in middle school yeah. or not. I mean, I think that would be a yeah. question in my mind. That would, that would be your only possible solution. Right, and we'd have to pay the piper. The taxpayers would. Are there, are there any, anything else we want to ask Mr. Tackett at this time on, on this subject? I guess not, Mr. Tackett. We put you through the ringer tonight. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Appreciate it. Mr. Director, number 10. Number 10. Ms. Debbie, do you mind coming up to the mic and I'll read the motion while you're on the way up here. The Rafael County School Health Services Department has developed a training site for new nurses in the old John <coughs> Coleman building. The site will be used for CPR, first aid training, nursing skill stations for annual competency determinations, new school nurse orientation meetings and in-services. Sarah Delvish, Director of School Health Service, has submitted a request to name the training site after Liz Graves. Ms. Graves retired from Rutherford County Schools in May of 2011 after being a School Health Nurse Services Director for 13 years. The Health Services Department is planning an opening and naming ceremony in August and have invited Ms. Gray's family to attend. Pursuant to policy 3.210, the director may make recommendations to the board for naming a portion of the school campus or property. I think it's a wonderful idea. So the motion is to approve the naming of Health Services Department training site, the Liz Graves Nursing Education Center. Do you mind kind of sharing how this, how you kind of came up and thought about this? About naming it after yes, Liz? After Ms. <laughs> Um, after we were told that we were going to be able to develop this um, part of the old John Coleman building, um, we merged two classrooms and so it's about the same size as the Professional Development Center classroom um, to hold the, the meetings. Um, we just kept calling it the old John Coleman building, the nursing, and I said, we need to come up with some, something to call this. And I sort of put it out to my staff. I said, does anyone have any suggestions? And one of the nurses who had been with the, the system a long time recommended that we, we dedicate it to Liz. And I thought that, I mean, that's just a perfect solution. Um, she really got the nursing department off the, the ground here in Rutherford County. and. Uh, she's got so many family members uh, still active in the school system. Uh, I just thought it would be a very fitting um, tribute to her and, and give her some legacy here in the in the district. I think she would be pleased. And, and I spoke with Spencer, her husband, and he was very touched. And um, I, I hope that you guys would approve. You know, I think I was in attendance at that time and worked with her back then. I think she was our first nursing supervisor and really did some innovative and put the <clears throat> in place. She was very active in the legislature, and they called on her quite often. Absolutely. On that. Questions from board members? Great idea. We're we'll bringing up for a vote tomorrow night. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so. And I think the if if approved, we would dedicate probably in mid September on an early dismissal day when everyone had a little bit more wiggle room in their schedules. So. Thank you. Anything on insurance tonight, Nancy? Uh, no, our next meeting will be August the 24th. It'll be our first one of the year. Okay, thank you. Director's update. Uh, I would like to, I'll step up to the mic if I might. I'd like to share the exit survey summary with the board this evening. <clears throat> You want to be introduced? <laughs> Are you okay? All right. That's fine. I can share. Um, one of the things that, uh, as we talked about, uh, people were leaving and replacements and that sort of thing, a large school system now, of course, close to 5,000 employees, about 3,000 certified, and another couple of thousand that are classified. And I know Ms. Moore worked in HR, and she said, why don't we do some surveying and see what they think? And so it's a very good idea. We've done it more informally, but we created again, Chris Marshall helped us to create it with different people here having input on some of the questions. 
And so this is a kind of our first one to report to you. Um, and I think it's a very strong report. It gives us some information. So I'll quickly, you have a copy of it, but I'll quickly go over some of this. Um, we've had 226 respondents to this. Um, it's anonymous. Uh, so people could choose to respond or not respond um, in this particular case. And it uh, actually tracks how long it takes them to fill it out. The average time was 10 minutes and 43 seconds. <laughs> uh, so they're spending a little bit of time thinking about some of these questions and filling it out. So to kind of give you some information of the 226 respondents at this time that he completed, 82.6% were certified people and 17.4% were classified people. So the first uh, real question there is, what influenced your decision to leave? And they had a, a number of choices to make. And we're looking at these and may revise it a little bit more for this year again and see. But the top four choices and reason people leave, number one was a better opportunity at 23.4%. Retirement was 19.7%. Moving 17.9% and family circumstances 15.6%. And so the rest of them is fairly, the total of the remaining ones is fairly low compared to those. So that's your top four reasons why people might be moving. So I think this says something to us about seeking better opportunities, the competitiveness now that we find ourselves in for personnel. Um, it's just a different time than it used to be before. We asked some other questions. How about your satisfaction with sal salary? Um, how about with what we're paying, competitiveness in that? And about 87% did not make a negative comment about salary, either very extremely satisfied or somewhat or neutral in that. It was not negative to them for that for our salary. So I thought that was a good thing when, from a competitive nature. Um, we asked a question about your supervisor. How do you feel about your supervisor? This is the do you like your boss question <laughs> sometimes that you do. Now, the people that completed this are also people who were non-renewed. Uh, so, again, anybody could fill this out. So it includes people that for many categories that completed this. And slightly, a little more than four out of five were not dis dissatisfied with a supervisor. And, and I, would, I would think in a lot of companies <laughs> that would be doing this survey, I would think this is a pretty good percentage that, that you have around 80% or so that was okay with their supervisor in this. So I did not view that as a, a negative component either. Um, the next page, write your satisfaction with your work schedule. This would probably be, teachers are more locked in that situation, you're classified people, that sort of thing, this would be another, but over 90% of the people are okay with their work schedule. So that again, that doesn't appear to be a really big issue for us in that realm. Rate your satisfaction with working conditions, um, that would be where they work, the schools, facilities, that sort of thing. So again, 84%, did not view their working conditions as any type of a negative factor in this. So I thought that was also very good again. Your satisfaction with cooperation with your school or department. You know, we kind of put this question in because we're a professional learning community school district. One of the things, and you've been here, those of you that have been here for quite a while, we talk about the collaboration model and what does it mean. So what's happening out in the schools that we see? So this is really good feedback for us with the PLCs, the Depression Learning Communities. 85% experienced non-negative feelings about collaboration with almost 50% being extremely satisfied that they had the opportunity to work with others and that this was a collaborative environment they were in. So again, very good feedback to our instruction department and others that are built in this particular model. Another thing, the question that we ask, which again, targeting mainly our teachers, how about our professional development? If you're in school system and you're having all these changes coming down from the state, when you're having standards that are changing all the time, you're seeing different models and all, how good a job are we doing for professional development? And less than one out of 10 respondents were dissatisfied with their press, uh, professional development. That is really outstanding. So again, very encouraging feedback 
on how well we help our employees improve after they're working for us. What do we offer them to make them stronger in their field or their endeavor, what they're doing? So I really felt good about that one, um, that, that what we're targeting. We have the differentiated instruction conference, which we called it when we first started a number of years ago. And again, we have over a 1,000 signed up again this year. We're one of the only school systems in the state, and the companies that have helped us do this, there's not hardly any of these across the country in school districts that bring this many people in. It's been appearing and so on the state website and some of the information coming down from them saying, hey, Rutherford County is doing this conference again for all their teachers, you know, this year. So very positive and, and apparently our people appreciate it. So I thought that was very good. Another question we wanted to ask, what is your satisfaction with employee health benefits? Um, and I think this is very critical to us for question uh, also. And so only 9.5% of those leaving were dissatisfied with Rutherford County's employee health benefits. Um, you know, I think this element is very, very critical to us to recruit new teachers and to retain teachers and other employees in our system. I did share this with uh, Rhonda Allen today, who's chairperson of Health and Ed. And I asked her, I said, how about and with your permission as a board, you can give me some feedback kind of at the end. I'd like to present this to that committee. She said you may even want to get it to budget and finance because it comes up quite often, well, can we afford this in church? What can we do? And I want to say I think it's an absolutely critical element for our ability to recruit and retain teachers. But I don't think it's only us. I think it'll be true for the sheriff's department. I think it'll be true for the road department. I think for EMS services. I think this is a critical element. And I think this, uh, where you have less than 10% of the people are dissatisfied with it, speaks to that. And I think we need to share that and let them know uh, how beneficial this is. Um, the other question we have, well, how about your central office here? And this is your people, which you have your coordinators, you have your specialists, we have people that go out and help our people in the schools and do that. So we ask this, this question, what is your level of satisfaction with central office support? And again, extremely satisfied, somewhat satisfied, neutral, somewhat dissatisfied, or extremely dissatisfied. Most all these questions have those five areas. Um, and, and not every employee will uh, interact directly with the central office a lot. We do have orientation for all new teachers is another one tomorrow, which I think is our fourth one, and all like that. Most do it some time or the other, but only 7% expressed a negative response to the support of the central office. And I, and I think this is an accolade to our human resources department. It's an accolade to your instruction department, your technology that conducts trainings and, and uh, with your STS, the school technology specialists that you have out there in your buildings, the, the finance department in answering questions uh, and helping them uh, determine that those things, our maintenance department. Uh, I think all of that one is central office. We didn't specify any particular area. I just think it says c collectively that our people that work for us uh, feel pretty good about the support they get from this office. Going to the next one, and I think this is the one, page four, and this is the one that kind of speaks to, um, as we look forward to what we might say, how many of these people that are leaving us are going to another school system? And 43.7%, even though they're happy with all this other, are going to work very often in another school system. So I want to share this also with our health and ed and people and say how competitive it's become. And, and I think part of this is saying, um, you, you know, when you go back and you look at the other questions, what was the greatest influence in to leave was better opportunity. I, I think the millennial generation now, uh, generation Y sometimes it's called, uh, some of the others really look at employment very differently than baby boomers and some of the others prior to that. Um, they're looking for the balance between home life, work life, 
Uh, they do not mind moving or relocating to say, hey, if I got a chance to move up in this position, they'll go somewhere else and do it. I mean, we saw other comments of people saying like, Wilson County offers um, daycare for some of their employees. We examined this and it was quite expensive for us. Mr. Gill, I was one of the ones on that very early on, a number of years ago. But in people that did give us feedback in this, it, it, would, it would be things like that, or they're offered. We've said this before, we train our people so well in intervention and our instructional coaches, they go to be principals in other school districts. And, and when they see this opportunity to advance, very often they'll go. And so, but I, I just thought that was really, really interesting um, when you look at this, and I think it's that, it, that, that culture of, of, of an opportunity to improve your position, to advance, to give people, our people a chance to move up is really critical to that culture again. And I think it shows up, kind of in this question. But I, I think the last question was one of the ones that I found most interesting all. Would you consider Rutherford County, it was really Rutherford County Schools, um, for employment again? After, and this is the 226 people that's leaving and, and 221 answered. Remember, they could skip a question. So um, you got one question, I think it had 226 maybe, or 224 may have been the, 226 was working conditions. Everybody answered that one. But they would sometimes skip one or two questions because, again, anonymous. But I thought this was really, really interesting to say of all the survey questions that basically 11.3% said no. So you've got 89% of the people that's retiring, leaving, or moving would consider working for us again. And I would challenge a whole lot of major corporations or businesses in Rutherford County or anywhere else if they did this survey what they might come up with. I, I, this seems extremely, it, it's high, but I think it's very complimentary of you as a board and complimentary of the school system of the, the, how people feel about when they leave. And, and I think that's important and good feedback to us. Ms. Moore, what are you, I mean, you've done these before. What, what does this kind of look like to you? You know, I, I appreciate so much that that the school system that you and the HR department and everyone else involved, mm -hmm. I'm sure IT as well, because this mm -hmm. is a pretty thorough, detailed um, survey, did this. I know, I'm sure there were probably some moans and groans when first brought this up, because it is a huge undertaking. And when you talk about a, a system as large as many employees as mm -hmm. we have, and, and the turnover, just alone with retirements and everything, not to mention you know why they're leaving for other things, this was huge, and I think the questions that were asked um, were very well worded, um, very suitable, you know, things mm -hmm. that we needed to know. And, you know, one of the things I see throughout here, too, looking at it is just, again, from, from what experience I do have, especially when you keep it completely anonymous. Mm -hmm. um, I, first of all, I don't know exactly how many employees we had leave, what the percentage was as, as to We started late also. So you remember we kind of came up with the idea of doing this, what, early, was it January or somewhere? I mean, it was kind of late. So this next year we should have pretty much a whole right. year. But I think that what I suspect is the response rate was, was very I significant. So. Um, and from experience, I know that, again, when you keep them anonymous, that your dissatisfied ratios that, I mean, let's face it, there's always in, in any employment, um, there's always going to be, I think it's usually around 5 to 8 percent, they say, that are, that are going to respond negatively no matter what mm -hmm. you did or, or didn't do. And a lot of times those are from people that have left that were terminated involuntarily. So, um, yeah, I think this speaks volumes. I think it's very positive. I'm excited um, about the results. And You know, the only thing I guess, the other question that I might have when I look at going to another school system, you know, and you look at some of your comments, some of those are people that have moved out of state. Or, yeah. you know, like one says here, I'm sad to go back mm -hmm. to Colorado, and another one, if I ever move back from California, um, I'd like to come back. So I don't think that all of those that, that are going to another system are necessarily... Right a negative reflection on Rutherford County, but I certainly do think that it's very indicative of the fact that we do a good job 
with our benefits and with the way we take care of employees, but encouragement, I think, to, to continue to strive to, to maintain those standards and even improve them when we can to see if we can't you know, cut back on losing folks to other school systems. But let, let me read some of the comments. I picked some of the positive ones out, and, you know, and you'll get any of a number of things. Like I say, one of them about can we get child care or something like that. But this is just something that caught my mind. I was retired as a vice president of operations from a major company and enjoyed beyond doubt that this job is what they actually said better than any of my working life. I love my job. I'm going to miss everyone in the school. Thank you for an awesome job. I loved every minute of being a teacher in RC schools. Extremely sad to go back to Colorado. And, and again, you're right, several of them, spouse was being transferred and moved, so we saw that multiple times where somebody was having to leave. I appreciate the support from all levels for teachers and focus on student success. Very professional statement there that I saw. Thank you so much for all the investment and time that you have put into my career as a teacher. Thank you for the opportunity. I've loved teaching and growing with my students. If I move back, I would love to be in Rutherford County Schools. I'm deeply saddened to leave. It's been a joy and a blessing here. Love everyone here. So we got a lot of very positive comments from that. Questions, comments, many board members will try to respond, Dr. Anthony or myself. Or well, I'll make one comment. I think, I think this is um, really excellent. <laughs> I mean, I, I really do it. I think the idea behind this, uh, an exit survey, was uh, was was really good. I'm, I'm I'm glad to get this information. Board comments. If you'd like a question to ask, if you'll feed it to us as we designed kind of the one for this one. If you see something that's one of the ones that we had in there that I couldn't quantify very easily is because, and we're going to change this. We asked them how long had they worked. And people put it in so many different forms. Some said so many months, said, some said so many years. So in the next survey, we're gonna put windows in there like maybe one to three years, three to five. So next year when we do this, we can talk about at what experience level we may be losing most of our people with. But it, when, when you leave it to people, they won't understand it really well. Somebody's worked 21 years is probably not going to multiply that by 12 and put it in months. So I think we're going to have to categorize it so that the software and all can kind of, you know, help it identify it for us. Since the 89%, um, I believe, 5, 6, 7, 80, no, 93% were neutral, somewhat satisfied, or extremely satisfied by with satisfaction with the central office, uh, I, I think I'll just declare that the school board is part of the central office. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> if that's all right with everyone. <laughs> you didn't ask him about the school board by themselves. We did not do a separate yeah, question. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't ask. <laughs> well, I think they do look at you with us. I really do. I mean, I think they view us all together <laughs> in that. I, I'll say my compliments to Miss Moore for. Uh, the pushing for the uh, <clears throat> for the initiative and uh, the execution is just outstanding. Uh, the performance is is much to our credit. I, I would strongly encourage that we make this presentation to Health and Ed, perhaps to the entire county commission, uh, as many places as often as you possibly can. If this is your new Rotary Club speech, um, take this information and let's share it with the community uh, because it is it is wonderful. The analysis that was given to us or, or the, the potential analysis that was shown to us from the safety coaches was outstanding. This might just be one step better, but tonight is a great night to be a board member because the information is coming to us in, in, great, in great format. You know, you, and, and it kind of as Ms. Moore said, usually the, somebody's very verbal and vocal in this. And when you hear something that from a constituent or somebody else, well, and nobody up there likes what's going on. It just gives you some ammunition. 226 people took the time to complete this. And, and actually, I looked today, and it was up to 231. But, but each person now is less than a half a percent. You know, 100 people be a percent. So to try to have included those at the last minute, um, wouldn't have changed it very much. In fact, what we're seeing is very much of the same pattern continuing. 
Any other comments for the director on, on this? Thank you. Do you have uh, anything else on the director's update? No, we do um, not anything. We still certainly scores and that sort of thing. We've gotten some quick scores and all, but again, as I said before, until it goes through the process, you don't even know whether that score is proficient or advanced or just basic. And so it still appears it's going to be the October, November time frame. Mm. And, and that just does not work good for school planning. No. Because if you're going to implement something or change based upon academic data, you need it at the start of the school year. To come in and try to change it in December, I mean, I've been an administrator 20 something years. It just doesn't work very well. Cool. <laughs> it is not. It's wasting a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's move on here. Number 13, uh, Ms. Moore, anything from the Hill? Nothing to report this evening, Mr. Chairman. I anticipate that after some updates that we're probably going to get it that from the TSBA this coming weekend at the conference that we may have, may have some things to report out on when we meet again in August, because I don't think we have any more meetings in July, do we? That's right. We do not. Um, okay, thank you, Ms. Moore. Um, Mr. Holliday, anything on the federal? We'll punt for tomorrow, for tomorrow night. Okay. Uh, number 15, general discussion by board members. I didn't want to share one thing with you. I don't know if you saw it or not, but I found it most interesting. I, I thought that um, the comments Mr. Zago made about uh, the eclipse and, 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 and also Mr. Holliday and his um, rather lengthy email about the about the eclipse, and that we were going to really use this as a teaching thing, you know, and and uh, and I thought that was really uh, a, a great idea, and I know plans are going on. When the, uh, Nashville did the opposite, and they took the day off, the entire they, reversed, man. they but they reversed it yesterday, and and, and uh, Mayor Barry said they were safer in school, that was her reason, I believe, and that you could use it as a learning tool. And the school board uh, actually agreed with her, so <laughs> so they so they are going uh, to, to school. So they will see the eclipse as well. I just wanted to share that with you. Do you have anything else on on uh, on general discussion by board members? Any any topic, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Um, it's a work session tonight, as you indicated earlier, and it's an uh, opportunity where we can kind of kick some things around. And uh, I don't really anticipate a lot of discussion, but there were a couple of things that were on my mind, and I wanted to get them out uh, in the, in the uh, public format here of, of a meeting. And uh, I've shared them in writing uh, with each of the board members. And as you say, uh, if, it's, if it's from Aaron Holiday, sometimes it is rather lengthy, but I'll read this into the record. So. Uh, so that uh, in the future we may consider these things. This evening I'm offering three initiatives for the board to consider in the coming weeks and months. It is reasonable to expect that action on these items could take months, even years of planning, yet a commitment from the board is a reasonable starting place. Number one, a second set of Rutherford County Magnet Schools. This would be a K through five and a six through 12 format and likely located in the north end of the county. Number two, something that I conceive of and call the Smyrna Squadron, a CTE pathway for aviation studies. Uh, a state-of-the-art curriculum would be developed that uh, incorporated the fixed-wing flight curriculum that's currently part of the Tennessee uh, standard of curriculum, but also uh, whether it be prop, jet, or alternative propulsion, drone flight and GPS navigation, something that is truly cutting-edge state-of-the-art uh, in a, in a uh, curriculum standard. Uh, flight school certification. Currently, there are two schools, one in Memphis and one in Metro Nashville, that offer flight school certification. Ours could be the third uh, site in the state. Uh, I think it would be conceivable that an Air Force aligned junior ROTC uh, would be uh, appropriate in, in this, and it could capitalize on the proximity with Arnold Air Force Base and also the historic significance of Seward Air Force Base. Uh, also, strategic partnerships with the world-renowned MTSU Aviation and Aerospace Program, the Smyrna Airport Authority, the Chamber of Commerce, who has identified aviation-aligned businesses as one of their primary areas to recruit into our county, and then also the Civil Air Patrol, both the Smyrna and Murfreesboro Composite Squadrons. The third item is a full-time status for the Coordinator of Fine Arts. 
I am continually impressed with the student impact in scholarship dollars. Hundreds of thousands of dollars today are available through the fine arts and uh, the fine arts coordinator has an impact on that. Curriculum impact, the, integrated the integration of studies uh, are certainly significant. You can uh, design a 30 degree post route and use that in geometry class. You can talk about the physics of a curveball, but the number of crossover opportunities there are in curriculum uh, through the arts uh, are just very, very broad. And again, a fine arts coordinator can impact that. Finally, the community impact as we continue to grow our identity, our soul, our culture in our community is uh, held secure by our appreciation for the arts. I make this statement in general board comments open to any discussion which may ensue. However, my stated intention is to allow my fellow board members to freely discuss these ideas with their constituents and others in advance of future action that the board may consider. I am seeking traction for these ideas and wish to find it in a larger discussion, which most certainly will have, which most certainly this will have impact on and shape the manner in which these initiatives may or may not be adopted. My desire is to be in step with the best intentions of the Tennessee Sunshine Law and make a personal recommendation widely known for the benefit of public input and improvement. There are a lot of ways that we can consider ideas. If we consider ideas privately and uh, by uh, marshalling together the forces that will allow them to pass, they don't always result in the best outcomes. Uh, sometimes uh, it takes a certain amount of courage, but uh, sometimes the right thing to do is to put an idea out there and let everybody discuss it and, uh, and see what comes. The timing is set with, close, with the close of the budget process and allows for maximum consideration before another budgeting cycle would begin. We've just gotten our budget from the County Commission and uh, we have maximum opportunity to consider these things before we have to uh, take a look at those line items again. Some additions can be found justified within the larger context of growth in Rutherford County and the Rutherford County school system, while others may be appropriately considered in the context of choosing to reallocate resources from programs that should be ended in favor of programs considered worthy of investment for our future. I will continue to work on other initiatives that are either beneath or beyond the immediate interest of the Rutherford County School Board specifically an indoor training uh, building or batting cage for the Laverne softball program and a program to ensure U.S. citizenship for every Rutherford County school student before graduation. These are just personal ideas that I'm working on and quite honestly, they haven't gotten as far as the three that I highlight at the top of the page. Comments from board members. Questions for Mr. Holliday? It's a lot to digest, so uh, it's not hurt feelings over here for, for no questions. Uh, fellow board members, again, I offer this <clears throat> just to uh, make a starting point and uh, look forward to, uh, to future discussions. Any other general discussion by board members? should have your schedule there that Ms. Michaels has put, has put out and um, Ms. McLeod has the policy committee meeting on August 9, which will be the next time that we get together, I guess, except for our, our convention. And then August 16th, everything, is, everything on here is 5 o'clock. August 16th, we'll be back to work there. Anything else? Thank you so much for your input. It's been a good night. We are adjourned.